it is strong language and there is absolutely no wiggle room in the interpretation of what China is intending to do. The only thing that's left that's legal to do with cryptocurrency in China is to possess it. Uh, but let's see how long that lasts for. Uh, from from our point of view and from looking at trading over the weekend, yes, there was the inevitable dip on the back of it. But have I seen a skittish market? Do I think that this is going to lead to the collapse of cryptocurrencies? I'm afraid, no, I don't. Um, certainly, we saw a relatively low volume over the exchange and across cryptocurrency more broadly in terms of trading volume over the weekend. It, and it's not because this isn't news. This is significant news. It's just that this is significant news that we already priced into the market in June and recovered from. And I suspect that that's a certain degree of complacency when it comes to to these Chinese announcements. Now, however, you know, if you look at other kind of exchanges and other businesses that are directly facing into China, yes, this has had a very clear short-term impact and price um, price movement in space for the likes of Hobby and for OKX, etc. They've certainly um, had to wear something over this weekend, and I'm sure they're going to see that impact their bottom line um, over the coming months. But overall, is it going to be the death knell for cryptocurrency? I really doubt it. And if anything, I think it's probably a bit of a, a false step from China. Oh, as we know, China is interested in controlling data rather than uh, than anything else. And another little little piece I found was that Twitter is going to let its 330 million users from just bouncing Bitcoin around each other. That's a contrast to China, isn't it? Well, that's it. And I suspect that's probably more where the market's been focused on. You're right, this announcement that's just come out where Twitter users will be able to send and receive uh, Bitcoin as tips, they say, um, for for users of their social media platform. That's far more transformational. That's going to be putting the day-to-day -day every use of Bitcoin within the grasp of the everyday user uh, using the Lightning Network. And this is a very clear progression and step forward uh, and responding to a lot of the critics about you know, what is it actually good for? Why, you know, why would a regular person want to use this? Um, and, and we're seeing this leadership from Twitter in this area. So I think for, for those who are using cryptocurrency, you're looking at this news coming out of Twitter. You're looking at obviously definite movements coming from the US in terms of regulation. But you've also seen that pivot away from China and into a more Western sphere of dominance through the um, the shift in the mining of Bitcoin and, and all of those kind of factors combined together to create this quite a different, I think, perhaps price profile. Uh, and that's what we're seeing um, today and over the course of the weekend, as you say. But it's going to be really interesting then to see what is going to move the price of Bitcoin as we head into this final quarter of the year. If something like Evergrande, which is obviously causing contagion, contagion across all our traditional markets, seeing more of that spill over into the price of Bitcoin, etc. So it's going to be very, um, as always, very interesting. It's certainly never boring or dull when it comes to the crypto land. But, but yes, it's certainly going to be interesting. But I do think that that for for China, with all of the efforts that they've done. Uh, plowing resources into their soft power efforts that perhaps they've missed a trick here when they look at where countries like El Salvador, Afghanistan, Laos, etc., and how they're all progressing forward with cryptocurrency. For China to be stepping back as it has decided to do so, maybe a misstep.